Hello darlings and welcome back to my channel. So today I have a very special video, my very first sewing class. And today in this first sewing class we will be making a circle skirt like the one you see here beside me and like the one that I'm currently wearing. So why I chose circle skirt for my very first sewing class? But there are quite a few reasons. First of all, circle skirts are very easy to make. So even if you are a beginner, even if it will be the very first garment that you will make, definitely you will be able to make it from the beginning to end and create a variable garment. Second reason, even though it's a beginner friendly project, there are quite a few techniques such as invisible zipper for example that will be useful for those who already have a little bit of sewing experience. Third reason, the pattern for circle skirt is very easy to make and it will be made based on your measurements so you will definitely have a great fitting garment. And fourth, fourth reason why I chose circle skirt for this class, it's very timeless and very classic piece that is very versatile and will fit any wardrobe. So you can dress up with it, you can dress down it a little bit with it, you can wear it to work, to school or even in some event. So it's very versatile and classic piece. So I am sure that you will get a lot of use from it. So this video will consist on several different segments such as measuring, fabric preparation, zipper installation and etc. So I will timestamp each segment in the description box below so that you can easily find it later on. If any video part is unclear please leave a comment in the comment section down below and I will answer it. And if you make a garment using this tutorial I would really love to see it so please send me a message in my Instagram I will link it down below and if you allow me I will share it in my Instagram stories as well. So without any further ado, let's start making our circle skirt. So Julie, from the other day, I have my hair in a ponytail because I don't like sewing with my hair flying everywhere around my face, so a ponytail works perfectly. And I have everything set that we will need to create our circle skirt. So let's start from the main fabric. Circle skirts are very, very forgiving and you can create them from virtually any kind of fabric that you want. However, I have two recommendations for you. If you are a beginner, I do advise you to choose either cottons or wool blends because these fabrics are really easy to work with. And second tip, I do recommend you to try making the circle skirt from either medium or heavier weight fabrics because then you will have that beautiful, beautiful drape. So the fabric that I chose today is a wool blend. It's about 400 grams in a square meter. So it's on a bit heavier side fabric and uh, I think it will look perfect as a circle skirt. Moving on, we have our lining. So now the natural question is why you need lining at all? So two reasons. Number one, adding lining to your clothing ensures that the item will serve you for a longer time because it will not wear out as easy. And second reason why you need lining is for this specific circle skirt adding lining will ensure that your drapes drape beautifully so when choosing lining I have two tips for you number one if you're going with a heavy weight fabric choose a heavy weight lining if you're choosing a lightweight fabric choose a lightweight lining number two if your fabric is see-through then you have to choose a lining that is as close to the main fabric with color as possible however if your main fabric is not see-through just as in my case you can then play a little bit with lining and choose any kind of color or even printed pattern if you wish so. Now third item that you will need is fusible interfacing and I have this one. It's a bit reinforced because of the additional threads that go here. It's medium on a bit lightweight side and we will be adding this fusible interfacing to our waistband because we want to give that waistband a shape. However, we do not want it to be very, very thick and sturdy 
because you will have problems wearing and breathing uh, while wearing your skirt. So such interfacing is perfect for that. So also we will need a invisible zipper at least 20-22 centimeters length. You can choose longer just like I have. We will be able to shorten it later on. However, do not choose a shorter than 20-22 centimeters length because basically you will not be able to squeeze into your skirt. When choosing invisible zipper, make sure you're choosing as close to your main fabric as possible. However, now that we are in lockdown, I couldn't go <laughs> to the store and choose a perfect match. So, well, I am doing the second best option that I have from my stash. And basically you just have to take your fabric and put this little thing here and see how it matches the color. And the closer the color match, the better the zipper. Also, you will need a spool of thread. Again, as close of a match as to the main fabric as possible. But again, we are in lockdown. I am not able to go in store and find the perfect thread. So the next best thing from my stash will work. And how you have to choose your thread. So basically you take a thread like this and you put on the main fabric. And if thread disappears on the fabric, you find yourself the perfect match. So now that we have all materials covered, let's move to another step. So now it's time to take our own measurements and to do so you will need a measuring tape and also you will need to wear something very thin and very close fitting. So I am wearing today a thin close fitting sweater so that my measurements are as accurate as possible. So now find the waistline which is the narrowest waist point. So for me it's somewhere here. Now take the measuring tape wrap it around your waistline. Make sure that you're not squeezing the tape. You're not letting it loosely hang there. Just very, very lightly put it around your waistline so it is staying on it very loosely, uh, very lightly, but it's not falling down and you can breathe and talk while you're taking your measurements. And make sure that you are in normal position. You're not sucking the air out. You're not exhaling, just in normal resting position. And then you can take your measurements. So for me, it's 70 centimeters. Now write this down. The second measurement that you will need is the length of the skirt. So again, from the waistline, we will go down and measure the length of our skirt. Here is the beginning of the measuring tape. And from the waistline, I am pulling the measuring tape down until I reach the point of the length of the skirt that I want. Now this is very good to do this in front of the mirror because you will be able to see the length and where the measuring tape lands. So for me it's somewhere here and it's 52 centimeters. So I will let you know one secret. Whenever I am making any kind of garment, I, I cut the pattern out of the fabric, you know, and I stitch it by hand and put it on and see how it fits. However, the only garment that I don't do this with is the circle skirt, because basically circle skirt is one measurement, the waistline. So if you take your measurements correctly, accurately, just like I showed you. So there is basically no need to do a fitting because the skirt will fit you perfectly. Before we move to cutting our pattern out and start sewing, I want you to do a very important step, which is to prepare your fabric. So basically fabric preparation is for two reasons. Number one, a well-prepared fabric ensures that you will cut out the pattern accurately. And second, it will prevent your garment from shrinking later 
on. So what basically you need to do, if you plan to wash your garment later on in a washing machine and dry it in the tumble dryer for example, you have to do the same with fabric before you cut it. So this ensures that the fabric is pre-shrinked so to say and the garment will not shrink later on. And also before starting cutting it out, you need to iron the entire fabric, making sure that it's smooth and there are no wrinkles because we want to have a very very wrinkle free fabric so that when we cut it we cut the pattern as accurately as possible. So I will not show how I iron the entire fabric and the lining, however I will show you the basics. So here I have my steam iron and I just give a little bit of a steam and I just gently gently press the fabric. The steam also gives that pre-shrinking so it also is very good to do that and I'm just making sure that I'm ironing every single wrinkle as well as pre-shrinking the fabric with steam. So one thing you may think what to do if I don't have a steam iron, that's not a problem, there is a hack as well. So let's just take another piece of fabric, yes like this. So here I have a bowl of water and I have a piece of cloth which is in neutral color, it's very very lightweight, it's basically see-through. So what I do? I put this cloth in water, I squeeze any excess water out of it, like this. Then I put this cloth on my fabric, like this. And then with my iron, I just lightly lightly iron the fabric and it will give basically the same effect and it's a very good solution if you don't have a steam iron which I know not everybody has so it's a very good solution and I've been ironing like this for eight years before I got my steam iron that you see here so you're ironing until it's barely barely wet anymore remove the cloth and just once again make sure that the fabric is completely dry and is completely completely smooth. Now continue to do the same with the remaining fabric and once you're done with the main fabric I want you to iron your uh, lining as well because again we will be cutting our pattern out and we need that fabric to be very smooth to ensure the precision. So now we are start making our pattern and we will be making pattern directly on the fabric. So the fabric is on the floor right side up and we are folding it in half just like I'm doing in the video. Make sure that the sides match together and there are no wrinkles on the entire fabric. So now that the fabric is folded in half, we will fold it again horizontally and just with measuring tape, I'm measuring the width of the folded fabric, we will need this later, and I am folding it in half. And once again, you want to make sure that the side seams match perfectly and there are no wrinkles on the fabric. I am measuring the length of the folded half, it should be the same as the folded width and again making sure there are no wrinkles. So now we will start drawing our pattern. Take the measure of your waistline, add 3 centimeters for the side seams and divide it by 6.28. 
In my case, the radius turns out to be 11.6 centimeters. And from the folded point, I am marking 11.6 centimeters, just as shown in the video. And from this point, you want to make a circular move and mark 11.6 centimeters or whatever the radius in your case is and just make that beautiful, beautiful circular loop. Just to remind you, always make sure that the beginning of the radius starts exactly at the corner. So now that we have measured that, we connect all the dots with a beautiful curved line. So we have one fourth of our waistline measured here. Now remember our length of the skirt in my case was 51 centimeters. I will be adding one centimeter for the hemline. So I will in total mark 52 centimeters from the marked line down. So it's easy to do with the measuring tape, 52 centimeters from the marked line and I am marking it again. And again, we will go all around creating a circular line. The more dots you will make, the easier for you it will be to create the curved hemline at the end. The measure always stays the same, 52 centimeters from the top marked line. And now we will connect the dots with the beautiful curved line again. The more dots you've made, the easier for you it will be to create this line. And one last thing, at the top we will also add seam allowance, which will be one centimeter. So one centimeter again, mark from the top line, add one more centimeter and mark again and connect again with the beautiful curved line. Now take a long ruler and at this side, at one layer of fabric, mark a straight line. This will be our back and later we will cut through this line. Now take your scissors and cut the top line where the seam allowance is and very carefully, slowly cut it out. Once you cut it out, you will have this beautiful, beautiful circle. Now we will cut out the hemline as well. Again, at the marked line, cut all away, all away around. Notice how I am using my left hand to press the fabric so that the layers do not move when I cut. Here, the base of your circle skirt is cut out and now we have to do the waistband. So the waistband, let's take a little bit more of the fabric. So our waistline was 70 centimeters plus 3 centimeters for the seams and then we will need half of this measurement because our fabric is folded in half. So I am putting from the folded side half of my waistline including the seam allowance and I am marking this measure. So now I will take my long ruler and I will draw the top of my waistband from the folded line all the way to the marked line, which is the end of my waistline. Make a line over here. Make sure it's a 90 degree angle and our waistband will be four centimeters long folded in half, which means we will need 8 centimeters plus 2 centimeters for the seam allowance. So in total, I am marking 10 centimeters and I am joining it again for the seam. I will take my scissors and cut it out. Again, take notice how I am using my left hand to press all the layers so that they do not move when I cut the fabric. So here it is, our waistband is ready and cut out. So now we have to cut our lining as well. So as with the main fabric, I have folded it vertically and then again horizontally, exactly like with the main fabric. I am making sure there are no wrinkles and all the sides match nicely. Then very carefully, I am taking the main fabric and putting it on the lining 
again making sure all the sides see match perfectly make sure that everything is equal there are no wrinkles all the sides match right now take your scissors and cut around take your time you're not in a hurry here and make sure you're using your left hand to press all the layers so that they do not move and also cut out at the top now remove the main fabric put it aside for a little bit and now we want the lining to be a bit shorter than the main fabric so i will cut off two centimeters from the hemline like you see so you can do it either by hand like i'm doing or you can mark the two centimeters and then cut it out i have cut a lot of fabric in my life so i am doing this by hand because i can visually see two centimeters pretty well again i am cutting it all away all around this step will ensure that the lining is not peeking through the main fabric now remove this you will not need it so just as we did with the main fabric take your ruler and mark this side where we will be cutting through and this will be the back of our lining so now open the entire skirt you can see already how beautiful it is and now i want you to cut through that marked line which will be our back lining cut all the way through and do exactly the same with the main fabric so now our pattern is finished our fabric is cut and we can start assembling our skirt so we will start assembling our waistband from using interfacing so the right side of the fabric is facing down and the wrong side is facing up so i went ahead and cut out the interfacing same size as the waistband now i'm putting it glued side down like this make sure the glue side is touching the wrong side of the fabric place it like this and then iron it secure Early. don't be afraid to use a little bit of steam so that your interfacing is well attached to the waistband once the interfacing is attached I want you to take the waistband and fold it in half so while you're holding it like this very carefully and lightly press it all the way through creating a nicely shaped waistband Again, don't be afraid to use a little bit of steam to really, really secure it in place. And once you have this step ready, we will move to the sewing machine. So, I want you to take the waistband, fold it in half, and at the center, make small notch. This will mark the center of your waistband, and it will be easier for you to attach it later to the main body of the skirt. Now, take the main body of the skirt, fold it in half as well, and at the top, make a little notch, same as you did now with the waistband, and mark the top center of the skirt. So now take your waistband, take the main body of the skirt and connect them at the top corners, right sides together like this and pin. Now move along the waistline and connect the waistband and the main body of the skirt at the center where you made notches like this, sorry for the blurred image, and pin again. Now move along to the final corner, top corner, and attach it to the corner of the waistband just as shown and again pin, pin, pin. Now you have to pin everything in between. It may seem for you that there are excess of the main body of the skirt but you have to fit everything in the same line as the waistband so take your time take as many pins as you need if you feel like there is excess fabric just unpin and pin together until every single piece of fabric is pinned and there are no wrinkles no anything i can tell you that this does take a little bit of 
practice and it may seem that there is way too much fabric at the main body of the skirt but trust me everything will fit together nicely if you need to don't be afraid to take out your pins and repin until you push every single piece of fabric to its right place so here it is the waistband is pinned to the main body of the skirt and there are no excess fabric left so you remember how we left one centimeter at the top of the waistband for seam allowance so now i am marking with magnet same one centimeter which will help me navigate my seam and it's a very good tool for beginners and i am taking my waistband attached to the main body of the skirt and i will start sewing exactly one centimeter aside and i am using my magnet help navigate so when starting sewing make a few stitches then make a few stitches back to secure the seam and then continue to sew when I'm sewing I am also removing the pins before I sew some people sew over the pins I sometimes do that but I do not recommend to do that because they might break your needle so very carefully and slowly I am making my seam and when you will sew till the end again you will have to secure your seam by doing a few stitches back so now that it's attached make sure everything is smooth and nice and there are no wrinkles or any imperfections and now I want you to take it to the ironing board and iron the seam open so take a smaller ironing board and place the waistband seam like this and then gently open the seam, take your iron and start pressing it. Because we are working at a very close distance while holding our seam open, be very careful not to burn your fingers. Don't be afraid to give a little steam because it locks the seam in open position way better and way faster. So once you finished one part of the waistband, then continue all throughout the waistband. So now that the waistband is ready, it's time to attach our zipper. And to do so, take the top of the skirt like this, and then the other side of the skirt, put right sides together. Make sure these two seams match because you want them match perfectly in the final look as well and pin them together. So to make sure that they are pinned at the same time, I just pin through both of them and this will ensure that they match in the final design. Now pin at the top till our folding line and also pin at the bottom our hemline together and now just easily pin the back seam again use as many pins as you need make sure that everything is at the same line and that the edges match together so like this and now we will start sewing but before that i want you to take the chalk and zipper so i moved my magnet to 1.5 centimeters width and I am adjusting the length of my stitch to the longest stitch. In my case, it's five millimeters. So now from this side, I want you to take your chalk and mark 22 centimeters down or whatever the zipper length for you is. So in my case, I am just marking 22 centimeters down like this from the fold line 22 centimeters down and I will mark this spot with some chalk. So now from the top of the fold line I will start making a seam 1.5 centimeters aside from the edge. I will secure it and then I will move my pins while I sew. So just to remind you we are now sewing with a very long stitch, 5 millimeter stitch, and we are sewing until the marked space. So once you reach this marked spot, I want you to reset back to the normal stitch length. In my case it's 3 millimeters. Then make a few stitches backwards to secure the seam and then continue to sew till the end of the seam. Then 
and again at the bottom as always don't forget to secure a seam with a few backward stitches so here is how the finished seam will look like and you can see how the stitches are very long here and now let's move to the ironing board so now i want to go ahead and cut the interfacing strips approximately one centimeter width and a bit longer than from the fold line to the mark space so we will be adding it like here on the seam now take the iron and iron it exactly through the middle of the seam don't be afraid to give it a little bit of steam to really really secure it in place once one side is attached flip it over and attach another strip of interfacing exactly at the same spot this step will ensure that it is very easy for you to attach the zipper and this spot does not stretch out so once this side is attached i want you to iron the seam open just spread the seam and lightly lightly iron it now it's important part not to over press it do not push the iron just lightly press and steam along the way creating a beautifully open seam if you will over press then on the right side you will see the seam allowance and this is something you want to avoid press lightly and without pushing but please do use steam to secure the seam in place so now I want you to take and change the standard foot to invisible zipper foot. In regular machines it will look something like this. I am using industrial sewing machine so mine will look a little bit different. Now I am taking my clippers and I am clipping off the seam that we made here. Remember those long stitches that we did? So yeah, we will now cut through them and we'll remove them and I want you to cut all the way till the secured shorter stitches are starting this place will be the opening for the zipper and we will be attaching the zipper to the open place cut till you reach those secured stitches here exactly where i marked them so now i want you to take the invisible zipper and open it up take your skirt like this and you will attach the zipper from that top plastic piece. I'm sorry for the blurred image. So yes, place that plastic piece on the folded part just a bit below where the fold starts and make sure that the teeth of the zipper are placed exactly on the seam. Remove any excess threads if needed and then carefully slowly start sewing as with every seam don't forget to secure the stitches and then slowly slowly sew now the important part is not to overstretch the fabric so make sure it's not stretched and that the zipper is just placed on top of the fabric and there is no pulling and while you're sewing make sure that the teeth of the zipper are placed on the folded seam line it will help you navigate the entire zipper easily till you reach the point of the opening do not under any circumstances so below that point you can even finish a few millimeters before that point point. and one side of the zipper is installed now i want you to close the zipper and make one marking here so here where the waistband is attached the main body of the skirt i want you to make a little notch on the zipper so for you it will be very easy to then attach the other half of the zipper exactly at the right place do not skip the step because it will be a great great tool for you to match those seams now open the zipper again take the other side of the skirt just like 
On the other side, place the little plastic thing a little bit below the fold line and place the tip of the zipper on the seam fold line. Now I have to warn you, this side will be a little bit difficult to attach because you are working on the different side of the sewing machine. But take your time, do not overstretch the fabric. Make sure that the notch is placed exactly at the place where the waistband is attached to the main body of the skirt here and just start sewing again don't forget to secure the seam at the top and again at the end so slowly make sure you're taking your time you're not in a hurry here do not overstretch the fabric because then the stretching will be visible so just gently place the zipper on the fabric and sew again like with the other side do not sew past the connection and you can even finish your seam a few millimeters before the seams are joined securing the seam with a few back stitches and cutting out the thread so now i will close my zipper and that's it actually the zipper is finished i will show you how it looks like so here is how the zipper looks like it's truly truly invisible you basically cannot even tell where the zipper ends and this is how it looks connected at the waistband because we made that notch we made it match perfectly on the outside now your zipper if your zipper like mine is a bit longer than needed then take a few centimeters below the joint point and just cut the zipper out yes i am using regular scissors they cut easily through this plastic zipper so no struggling and if you want to you can secure the bottom of the cut zipper with a few hand stitches i am very sorry for unfocused video here so very very simple no overthinking here just a few simple stitches to secure the seam if you want to just that additional security and after this point your zipper is installed and we can move to other steps so now it's time to work on our lining. So take the lining piece, put right sides together and at the side seam, make sure you are matching the top and the bottom parts and then pin all along the edge. While you are pinning, just make sure that the seam is neatly matched and everything is lined up correctly. So once you pinned everything together, take the top of the lining, put it at the waistband connection seam and then along the line, mark on the lining the spot where the zipper ends here. I will mark it with the chalk. This will be the start of our lining opening. So now just simply make a seam from the marked point down, making sure you are securing the top and the bottom of the seam. And again, we are working with 1.5 centimeter seam allowance here. So just stitch the seam as shown. So now that the seam is finished, we will do our edges and we will stitch it with the overlock and create a very neat seam finish we will do so also with the main fabric back seam so we will start stitching from the top here all the way down so if you have an overlock it's very easy simply just stitch the back seam raw edges with it if you don't have an overlock that's also fine you can do the same with your regular machine just simple either choose a mock overlock seam function if your sewing machine has it but if your machine doesn't have this function the simple zigzag stitch will work perfectly and just stitch along the side seams making sure that there is no fabric fraying do the same stitching on both sides of the raw edges at the back seam and when you are done with the main fabric you can do the same with the lining 
So now it's time to do our rolled hemline and to do so let's take the bottom of our main fabric, the wrong side is outside and just fold the hemline one centimeter and we will be stitching as close to the edge as possible, ideally at least one millimeter. We will be folding while we are sewing so just follow my moves and repeat exactly the same and do it all along the hemline. So when you went all around the hemline, like I am moving in this video part, stitch till the very end and secure the stitch at the end. Now I want you to take your scissors and trim the unnecessary seam allowance, so cut as close to the newly made seam as possible, like this, and cut all the way around. And when you will trim all around, we will just turn the seam once again and then stitch all around it. So let's just continue to trim all around the hemline. So when the hemline seam allowance is trimmed, just turn the seam like I show here and then stitch and try to match at the same seam. So very simple, again we will be turning while we're sewing and we will be stitching all around our hemline. So once you sewn all around the hemline, just simply trim the unnecessary threads, secure of course the stitch, and our hemline is almost finished. It already looks really beautiful and very neat, but one step still remains and that's ironing. So now let's move on to the ironing board. So now we will fix our hemline with the iron. I see it's very wavy, but once we give it a little bit of steam, it will set to place. So just very carefully, very lightly, I am giving it a little bit of steam and just lightly pressing all around it. And you can see how it's starting to get that really nice shape and starts to look very, very neat. Pressing is very important in sewing. I do recommend you invest in a good steam iron but if you don't have it don't forget the trick I showed you in the beginning of this video using a wet cloth it really does the magic so once you finished your hemline and did the same hemline with the lining I want you to attach the lining to the main fabric and this is how you do it so the main fabric is right side out at the top of the waistband we will be attaching our lining I'm opening a zipper a little bit so I have more space to work with and at the top of the waistband I am adding my lining just as I'm showing here in the video. And again, I will be adding it all around the waistband, making sure that everything matches neatly, both the waistband top and the side seams. And I will pin all around it. So now that we pinned everything in place, we will mark one centimeter for our seam allowance with the magnet and we will make a seam. Again, don't forget to secure both the beginning and the end of your seam. I am making my seam from the wrong side because it's a bit easier to make it from the straight waistband. And when you will finish the seam, I want you to iron it open just as we did with the waistband on the main fabric.
Now we will connect our lining to the main fabric at the zipper opening part and just pay very close attention to what I'm doing. I am folding at the waistband like this so that the right side of the main fabric and the right side of the lining are matching. Here at the top where the waistband is connected to the main fabric and the waistband is connected to the lining, I need to make sure that those two seams are matched up perfectly so I am matching them and I will pin them together and we will make a seam from here to here somewhat in the middle of the zipper so that our main fabric and the zipper is very beautifully connected and just notice that I have switched my presser foot to the left side foot so that I can stitch as close to the uh, zipper as possible. Now very important part is not to overstretch neither the main fabric nor the lining fabric so just make sure that every single layer is not stretched out and everything matches perfectly and when sewing try to sew as close to the zipper as possible again we will sew only to the middle of the zipper you can sew till the end but I prefer to leave a little bit uh, of a space here so that the lining just falls a little bit more beautiful and again secure the seam. At the top I want you to make a diagonal cut without damaging the seam, just removing the seam bulk like this. I am also cutting off a top part of the zipper and now I will turn that right side out and you can see how beautiful, beautiful this corner looks like. Very, very neat. The goal is to create the sharp edge at the top. Exactly the same with the other side. Again, I am matching those waistband connection seams at the right side and at the lining side as well. And again, I am sewing as close to the edge and as close to the zipper as possible. Just want to remind you again not to overstretch neither of the fabrics here, because if you will overstretch the lining, for example, then it will be visible on the right side of the garment that there is some weird stretching out going on so just a reminder not to overstretch neither of the fabrics we're stopping at exactly the same place as on the other side somewhere in the middle and again we are doing a diagonal cut to reduce our seam bulk here and then again turn it right side out and again we have a beautiful beautiful corner right here and our skirt is almost almost finished we're at the finish line just one more step left to do so now the last thing left to do is to join our waistband seam of the main fabric to the waistband seam of the lining fabric and this is how to do it. So simply hold both seams together, grab your needle and a thread and just using the very very simple joining stitch quickly run all around the waistband making sure that you are doing a stitch as close to the seam as possible and you are joining those two waistband seams together. I know that this step may be a little bit confusing so just pay attention to what I'm doing because it's really difficult to explain by word it's just really better to show it. It will give us that extra security at the waistband area and our lining will not be sliding off and our skirt will stay in place beautifully. So just using this very very simple stitch just run all around the waistband and connect those two seams together using this really really basic stitch. And once you've finished this seam, our skirt is a 
officially done give it the final ironing and that's it your first skirt your first circle skirt is finished and i hope you will enjoy it if any part of this video is unclear just leave it in the comments down below and i will try my best to explain it and just let's take a little moment to appreciate how beautiful both the outside and the inside of this skirt looks like So this is it and I hope you enjoyed my very first class. I will definitely appreciate every single comment that you post. I am looking forward to hearing your feedback so please drop me a comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye!